Now, Lord, we come before you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Lord, we ask you to fill us to the brim. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us. Bless us in this time of prayer and Bible study. Bless us, Father God, to find a new discovery of love with you. Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight, Father God, that your word will be clear, your word will be relevant, your word will be sure, that your word, Father God, will change our lives. Bless us, Lord, tonight, that as you speak to us, we will hear you and we'll obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. He does whatever he chooses to do, and he does it well, and he is always looking out for us. Yes, he, is. he is our Father. He is God. He's always looking out for us. Tonight, we'll be looking at day one, unit two, unit three, unit three. God pursues a love relationship with us. God is in pursuit of us. The Almighty, the awesome God is pursuing us. Nah, nah, nah. Have you ever pursued anybody? Mm. Have anybody ever pursued you? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not talking about somebody running after you. I'm talking about somebody loving to loving you and pursuing a love relationship with you. God is pursuing a love relationship with us. It is a symbol, it is a human symbol that does not compare with God's pursuit, but it's a human symbol of a, a boy running behind a girl to pursue her, to show her how much he's in love with her. Love comes from four different angles. There's storge type of love, storge. Storge love is family type of love where family loves each other. Family is in love with each other. They look out for each other. It is the type of love that one says, I can talk about my brother, but you can't. I can tussle with my brother, but you can't. I can talk about my sister, my mother, and my dad, but you can't. It is called storge, storge love. Then there's a love called eros love. Eros love is what most people can identify with. Eros love is the hand holding, eye winking, walking in the park type of love that a man has for a woman, a woman has for a man, and it has to be a man and a woman. It is the Eros, Eros type of love. It is the emotional, erratic, when I see you, my heart skips a beat type of love. It is the Eros type of love. When I hold your hand, I remember the first time I did. And it's the Eros type of love. When I smile at you, you smile back at me. It just turns me on and makes a difference in my life. It is Eros type of love. Then there's filial, filial, or filia, filial type of love. It is the friendly type of love. It's the brotherly love. It's the love that a man can have for another man it is a love a woman can have for another woman and still walk in the, in the sight of God. It is the brotherly type of love. It's that I look out for you, 
You don't have to look after me. It is the ride and die type of love. It is, uh, I'm going to have your back and you're going to have my back. It is the ride and die type of love. It is the love that brothers that are not brothers have for each other. Have you ever heard of, of, of filial, filia type of love? It is where we get the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. It is we are in for each other. Even though we're not sisters, even though we're not brothers, it is a brotherly type of love. I'm going to look out for you, you look out for me. It is a neighbors watching your house type of love. It is a filial, filial type of love. So we have family love. We have brotherly love. We have Eros love. And there's one I need to mention. What's the other? It's the agape type of love. It is the love that God has for us. It is unconditional. God loves us in spite of us. In spite of our meanness, in spite of our cussing, in spite of our misuse of other people, God yet loves us. He loves us when we obey him. He loves us when we disobey him. It is the love that is unconditional. And sometimes we have that unconditional love in our family. We'll go places and do things for people that don't deserve it. But it does not compare to the God's type of love where God loves us unconditionally. He loves us in spite of us. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're talking about the love God has for mankind and the love we ought to have for God. God be love. First of all, we have no choice to love God. If we love God, we have no choice of loving him unconditionally because God is God and we ought to love him regardless of what he does and what he allows. He is sovereign. He is the sovereign God. He has made a way out of no way. He does what he wants to do to whom he chooses to do it any way he wants to do it, any time he chooses to do it, any how he wants to do it. He is sovereign. He does what he wants to do. He even deals with the 80 and 90 year olds the way he wants to do it. The Bible says you are twice a child, once an adult, and we can see it as we get older. We all begin to act like children all over again. When you hit 80, 80 some years old, you're going to have it your way with us. That's right. yes? yes? And we've come to the conclusion that they deserve to have it their way. They paid their dues. So God is pursuing us. He is in pursuit of us. He wants to arrest our minds. He wants to arrest our hearts. He wants his love to pour, be poured out on us. And we are so human until we don't realize that God is pursuing us. And that God loves us in spite of us. Let's look at Matthew chapter 22. It's right there in your book on, on page 50. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38. It says... This is our memory verse for this particular uh, unit. He said to him, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. Command here. Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 38. Some version will say this is the most important commandment. So what is the most important thing? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then some versions say with all your strength. You got to love the Lord your God with every ounce of whatever you got in you. Because God loves us in a godly love. A love that's unconditional. 
God has been pursuing me all my life. Has he been pursuing me? When we look at day one, a love relationship with God is more important than any other single factor in your life. A love relationship with God is more important than any other single relationship in your life. God is looking for a love relationship with you. And I told you two weeks ago that this love relationship is really fellowship. It is really kononia. It is really coming together with God and interwoven yourself with him. It is the where we get the word intercourse. It's a love relationship with God. We, we have a love relationship with God and God is pursuing us to massage that relationship and have a deeper, deeper relationship with us. The basic truth for knowing and doing God's will will show us that we have a relationship with him. It is the basic truth that as we get to know God and as we get to obey God, it strengthens God's relationship as we do his will, as we walk with him, our relationship with him our relationships are strengthened. The author talks about the seven realities. It was written to the part, to the point that you to have a love relationship with God. The main point of this whole unit is that you will have a relationship with God. God will then walk through that relationship to accomplish through you whatever he pleases. He has a relationship with us. He wants to accomplish through us whatever God pleases, not what we please. We want it our way. We pray for our way. And every now and then, God will give us our way. But regardless of what God does or does not do, he is in pursuit. And he's in pursuit of us with a love relationship. It does not say that he's in pursuit of us for a like relationship. What's the difference between liking one and loving one? Is there a difference between liking one and loving one? Who's talking? Is there a difference between liking one and loving one? Okay. I think there's a difference if you like someone. So I can love somebody and don't like them? No, that didn't imply that. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me what you apply. If you, you have to like the person once you get with them. Oh, now you're getting deep on it. Say it again and now. If you like the person, then it's gonna go further to love. But if you just like them. Oh, you, you have to love. like them before you love them. No, no, <laughs> no. keep that, keep that. I'm trying to make sure I got this here now. You have to like them before you love them? Is that what you're communicating? I would think so. I wouldn't want to be with anyone I don't like or fall in love with that person. Oh, I see. Anybody else? Just a little about you. You talking? <laughs> there was a person I didn't care for, didn't really like their ways and how they uh, dealt with people, mm -hmm. but I actually loved that person and wanted them to. Uh, I didn't want them to be harmed or anything. I would help them when they needed it, but I just didn't like some of their ways. So when we talk about like, we, we uh, wait, hold the mic. When we talk about like, when we talk about like, are we talking about their ways, their actions? Yes? Okay, when we talk about love, what are we talking about? Love as a person. Love them as a person. In this case, it was an, uh, a brother in Christ. Okay, so that, that was my next question. This particular person is it a, and you said it's a brother in Christ. I was going to ask, did you love them because they were a family member? No. Did were, you love them because of certain status in your life? No, they were a church member. They were a church member. Right. And I got to love them because of 
that relationship as a, as a church member by yeah. being like their ways. Okay, so we can love a person without loving their ways yeah. or liking their ways, right? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. The closest friend you have or the closest family member you have or the closest individual you in love with, do you always like? No? no. Yeah. You don't always like them? No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> Make you want to get away from that? Yeah. Southwest says you got this, this <laughs> discount rate. You just want to get away. <laughs> Sister Irvin. Liking somebody is uh, you just a, like a close relationship with okay, them. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to actually start over right quick. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the youngest person in here got to be the one. Okay, like in, uh, you have a close uh, relationship with them, with the person usually, and there's a, I guess you could say an, uh, admiration, but uh, but when you love somebody, it's, it's more like you're attached to them, mm -hmm. and there's a, you know, caring, and that's where the in intimacy and all of that comes in. Wait, let's back up. You say you're attached to them. That means you're putting up with them? Yeah. Oh yeah, you put up with them. Trust me, you put up with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna trust you, Dee. Trust I'm gonna trust that one. You put up with it. So when you love somebody, you put up with stuff. The average uh, mother who goes down to prison to talk to their boy or girl, they are not liking their ways, especially if they're guilty. But every Sunday. Religiously, and some people actually miss church every Sunday to go down there religiously to visit that person. They may get to a point where they hate their ways, but you love them so much. I'm going to keep walking through them. And when you're loving them, guess what you're doing? You are actually praying that they change, that their lives change, their behavior change, their mannerism change. You got to get to a point where you love them. I think you have to have the love of God in your heart to put up with that as well. Amen. So you have to have the agape love in your heart in order to put up with Stargate love. Or Eros love. Or Philia love. You got to have the love of God. The love of God. You don't have the love of God. Some of your relationship will be gone by now. Yes? Yes. Now check this out. The question tonight is, do you have that love of God? Where you have a, a rushing, running after God where you want don't want to do it die. Have you ever gone and you're on your way to sin and you said, Lord, I'll be back with you here in a few minutes? You may not have been bold enough to say it, but you just had it in your mind. Now, I'm going to do wrong. I know I'm going to do wrong. I know it's sin. I know God is going to get me for it. I know I'm going to have to pay for it. I'm going to reap what I have sown, but God is just going to make me feel better if I say this or if I do this. Have you ever been to that point? Anybody ever been to that point? I guarantee you, everybody in this room has been there to that point. Because the reason why I know that is because we don't operate in godliness all the time. And we have come to the conclusion, this is gonna, some, some people who cuss all the time, they say, well, I got to cuss them out because it makes me feel better. Hmm. <laughs> it may be wrong, but I just got to tell them because I got to have this rush, this feeling. The dope thing, the, the alcoholic thing, the drug addict, they have to have that rush. And we who are in sin, we want to have that rush. And the reverse is as true. Those of us who love other people, we get a rush, we get a high of just being with them. Any witnesses in the house? I said you have a respect for those, those people as well. And you have a genuine respect. When you like them or when you love them? When you like them. When you like them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you lose respect to them, you don't like them anymore. 
When we look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, this boy had a relationship with his daddy, but he broke fellowship. He was still his daddy's son. He will always be his daddy's son, but he was his daddy's bad son. As his brother said, he was not. His brother wasn't there, but his brother said he wasted all that money on the women. And that's what the brother said. Now, he wasn't there, but he was judging him based on his personality, based, based on his attitude, and based on his reputation. So, love covers a multitude of sin, and we look beyond some things when we love people. The same people that will talk about somebody else's child, when their children get in that position, they won't talk about that. The same people that gossip about somebody else's husband, when their husband get in that point, they won't gossip about that. And will double down anybody else to do it. Because they just love. Who has number one? Sister Sister Woods. Uh, number two. Number two. Who has number one? It's an explanation. Who has number one? Pastor Davis, you had number one. Oh, I got number one? Gave me number two. Okay, let me look at number one again. Okay, God created you for a love relationship. God created you for a love relationship with God. God created you for a love relationship with God. Sister Richard. God created you for a love relationship with God. He created you for the purpose of loving him and living in his will. Has there been a time in your life when you question God's love for you? If there has, describe it. When everybody volunteer. Have there been a time in your life when you question God's love for you? Anybody? Boy, y'all show sure are sanctimonious. Have you ever questioned whether or not God loved you deeply or loved you at all? Thank God for this church. Hallelujah. We, we're the church without a spot already. I guess I used to when I was younger. Okay, when you were younger. I know the good Lord, he disciplines those he loves. Okay, so before she learned that God disciplined the ones he loved, she questioned whether God really loved. These are some notes that I have, and, and these are somebody else's answers, so I'll tell you. Times of depression. During the time of being depressed, some people question whether God really loved them. Times of loneliness, people question whether God really loves them. And I add, times of sickness, we question whether God loves us. Time of abuse situation, abuseness, of times of abuse, we question. And when we talk about questioning, we're, we're talking about whether or not God really loves us. People who are considering suicide, many times they will say that no one loves me. And my reply would be, God loves you if no one else loves you. It's a good thing to know that God loves you. Not only does he love me, he offers a wonderful plan for my life. Times of depression, times of sickness, times of loneliness, times of abuse, time of opposition, time of oppression, God yet loves me. Times when God says no to my prayers. Times when God says wait to my prayer. Times when God says later on to my prayers. I know God still loves me. But that's the mature me. When you walk in faith, your, your faith is maturing daily. 
And I personally have been immature in my walk of faith. And it's during those times that I question, does, does God even care? How many of you pray, pray, pray for your favorite sports team? Actually, ask God, oh, bless the Texans this year to be to win it all. How many of you actually pray for your favorite athlete? How many of you pray during the Olympics? How many of you are praying during the Paralympics? Anybody? We don't have any sports fanatics in here. How many of you pray when you're gaming? How many of you pray for your job to keep you? Oh, we're getting serious in here now. I mean, folk didn't just nod their head and start bowing. How many of you prayed for the house that you wanted, the car that you wanted, the credit score that you wanted? Prayed for the right child to show up. Because some of us got children, and when we got children, we don't know which one going to show up. So the rich you pray that this would show up that you had a hand in raising, rearing up. I'm talking about the same child with two different personalities. <laughs> which one going to show up? During the campaign trail, during the debate, which one we going to get tonight? And we got the same one we've been getting since 2015. That same one. And you know, we have to understand that in the midst of all that goes on around us, God yet loves us. B, in that same experience or these same experiences, were there ways God expressed his love for you? Anybody? During the time that you thought God didn't love you, were there ways that God expressed his love to you? you during know, your lonely moments, during your sickness, during your abuse. Yes, you know, sometimes when you uh, sometimes when you go through sickness and it's like, you know, detrimental sickness, it's not that you don't feel that God doesn't love you. It's like sometimes you might like, okay, why am I going through this? But then, uh, after you think about it, you know, the Bible says that after you have suffered a while, then the Lord is going to lift you up. So that gave me hope when I was going through what I was going through, that I was going to suffer for a little while, and then God was going to uh, bring me up. So it wasn't a fact that I didn't think God loved me. Okay. Will God come to my rescue? Yeah. Will God deliver me? How many people you... How many people here have had near-death experience? I mean, experience that you said, Lord, is this it? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Absolutely. One or two people, Lord, is this it? Yep. Yep, you're right. Lord, am I, am I going to close my eyes down here and wake up over there? Mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul says it like this. If I die over here, it's all right because I'm going to wake up over there. If I suffer down here, it's all right because this present day suffering is not to be considered anything compared to what glory that will be revealed in Christ Jesus yet to come. And while I'm suffering, I'm suffering for the sake of Christ because God loves me. He has a wonderful plan for my life. See, what scriptures do you turn to when looking for assurance of God's love for you? Come on, all over the room. Give me the scriptures. What scriptures do you turn to? Let me write them down for you. Who's start here? Go back. Psalm ninety-one. Okay. Who else? Sister, Bernie. Yeah, I know. I was going to say Psalm ninety-one too because uh, this is where I had to break it down and analyze it. Analyze it. Yeah. So when we're in trouble, we call up on the phone nine one one. Uh -huh. right. So, reading Psalm 911 is about 911. What you say? No. You, you done got deep over in this life. 911. The one who is under the shadow of the Almighty, one that's under the shadow of God, will have pleasure in the presence of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. So, Sister Barney said, if you just dial up 911, he will come to your rescue. Yeah. Psalm 90, verse 1. Sister Woods. 
Psalm 23. Brother Whitlock. Proverbs 24, 19. Proverbs 24, 19. Sister Whitlock. I can't think of one right off the bat. I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't think of one right off the bat. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> Sister, Sister Ray, Ray Charles. Psalm 91. 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 Psalm Fret not because of your evil ears. Your ears. Every day work, Bob. It work. She said, first John. She said, first John 4, right? First John 4. Oh, yeah, okay. First okay, John. yeah. First John 4. Okay, this is with I can't give you a specific one. I got more. Give me 10 of them. <laughs> give me one of the 20. Give me one of the 20. <laughs> okay. 45. 45. Luke 45. Luke 1. Luke 1 45. Luke 1 45. Luke 1 45. Okay, I have Isaiah 41 verses 9 through 13, specifically verse 10. Isaiah 41 verses 9 through 14. Romans 8 28. Romans 8 28. Romans 8 28. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15 verses 50 through 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. Victory in Jesus Church said, We win! We win. We win. All right, Sister Woods, we are going to. Number two. This unit will focus on the second reality. Write the second reality in the margin, but replace the word with you. The word you with The me. word you with me. Okay. With all my heart. In this unit, I want to help you to see that God himself pursues a love relationship with you. He takes the initiative to bring you into this relationship. He create for you. He created you for fellowship with himself. This is the purpose of your life. This love relationship can and should be real and personal to you. Number three, if you were standing before God, could you describe your relationship with him by saying, I love you with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength, yes or no? If not, how would you describe your relationship with God? Okay, thank you. So when you look at this, the author is saying that we got to have it all in our hearts. This love relationship that we have, it must be in our hearts. We can't be doing it because we're obligated. It has to be in our heart. Anything you do, it must come through your heart. Can you think of anything that people do, not you, other people, can you think of anything that people do because they are obligated? Brother now Psalm 27. Can you think of anything? Can you think of anything that people do? And they don't do it from their heart. They're doing it out of obligation. Talk to them. <laughs> work. <laughs> work. <laughs> I mean, that should have been the first one, right? <laughs> How many people here love to work and love going to work? Anybody? Love to work and love going to work. Knock them up. If, if you do, it's because you retire. You can go when you want to, how you want to, when you get ready. If you want to go. Now, how many people love their job? Love their jobs, love their job. Yep. I used to hear every every time I look up, I'm going to my good paying job. <laughs> right. Do you love your job or do you love the fact that it's money? Because the question becomes, 
If it never paid you, will you still go? Some people go to their job because they just like being there. People, everybody don't need money. They just showing up because they love their job. Sister, Irvin, will you go back to the post office? <laughs> you didn't like being there when you were there. Oh, I like my good paying job. <laughs> <laughs> you like your good paying job. Right. Did you enjoy the people who surrounded you there? <laughs> that that place there had a reputation. <laughs> that location had a tough reputation. So, so we have to do everything we do unto the Lord. And to, and I think it's Colossians and First Corinthians chapter thirteen, First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirty-one. Correct me if I'm wrong. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirty-one. Do all that you do in the Colossians chapter three. Do all that you do. Do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto, you may not like it, but do it unto the Lord. You may be struggling, but do it unto the Lord. That's what God is doing. You may get, they may get on your nerve, but do it unto, unto the Lord. In all that you do, do it unto, give, give it all you have. Give it everything you got. Do it unto the Lord. Because you love the Lord, you're going to do it unto the Lord. Number three. One of the church members, this is a story. One of the church members. One of the church members was always having difficulty in his personal life with his family at work and in the church. In a church meeting, he became extremely angry and stormed out of the room. It was obvious his life was filled with anger. Soon after, I met with him and asked, can you describe your relationship with God by, sin by, by sincerely saying, I love you with all of my heart? The strangest look came over his face. He said, nobody has ever asked me that. No, I could not describe my relationship with God that way. I could say I obey him, I serve him, I worship him, and I fear him, but I cannot say I love him. This man had a father who never told him he loved him. The son feared his father, but he didn't love him. The man had wrongly assumed God was the same kind of father. I helped this man realize God loved him and wanted to have a loving relation, a loving fellowship with him. That truth set the man free to experience the love of his heavenly father. Everything in this man's life was out of order because God's basic purpose for his life was missing. God created us for a love relationship with him. If you cannot describe your relationship with God by saying that you love him with all your being, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to bring you into that kind of a relationship. Amen. So. It tells the story of this guy who, he couldn't get along obviously with anybody. How do I know that? Look at what it says. He was angry. He had difficulties in his personal life. He had difficulties with his family. Difficulties at work. Difficulties at church. What's the common denominator? Him. Him. He is? Him. So who's the problem? How y'all come to conclude that this poor old man is a problem? Everybody just beating up on him, and y'all saying he's a problem. Because he's the common denominator. He's the common denominator. Have you ever seen people who have issues with everything? Every time you look up, they got something to complain about. Are they negative? Are they, are they looking at life with the glass half empty or half full? That's the same. Half empty. <laughs> when you look at the glass as if it is half empty, you look at the glass with negativity in your heart. If you look at the glass as half full, you look at the glass with positivity in your heart. It, it just blows me away on Sunday, on Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday, Sunday and Wednesday church, Thursday and Saturday on cycling.
people will say, oh, we can't go. It's a 40% chance of rain. <laughs> well, it's a 60% chance that it won't rain. It's a 40% chance of rain. I mean, quite obvious now, it's more of a chance that it won't rain than it is that it will rain. And by the way, we can do whatever we want to do in the rain. Because we want to do it, we're going to do it anyway. Whether it's raining. I tell the best road that I got caught five miles away from home. By myself, storming and raining. And man, it was coming down. It was storming dogs, cows, and horses. It was storming. He asked me, so what did you do? I put my head down and I kept everything. I put my head down so I could see a little bit and I kept pedaling. Mm -hmm. Cars zipping past me, I just had to keep pedaling. Mm -hmm. When you are stuck in difficult situations, don't impact other people's lives with your stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't get so angry with life until life not only beats you up, but it beats everybody up that meets you. This man was angry with the world. He couldn't get along with people at church, couldn't get along with people at work, couldn't get along with people in his family. You know, it's kind of like the, the cousin that shows up at the family reunion and everybody says, oh, Lord, there he is. The party's over now. Or the party's getting started. Which one of you? Are you the life of the party or are you the Grinch of the party? Or are you just even killed and you trust God and you walk with him and people know you love him? Can you describe your relationship with God as one who you love the Lord with all your heart? Now let me tell you now, there are some things that go along with that. If you love the Lord with all your heart, then you have to love mankind also. You don't have to be a people person, but it doesn't bother you to be around people. You don't have to be a social butterfly, but you can get along with people. And because you have tragedy in your life, doesn't mean that you gotta make everybody else's life miserable. So Sister Diane Henry says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So we have to understand that there is more to life than to your little world. Mm -hmm. See, we get caught up in stuff, and when we caught up and we throw our own pity party, we think this is the whole world. But he said that he, tried, he had to show him God loved him and wanted a loving fellowship, a loving relationship with him. He had to show him that even though your daddy didn't treat you right, that's not how God is. And many times, we have a picture of God based on how we grew up. And it does influence all of us. And I told you before, if, I can, if there was such thing as coming back to planet Earth as it is, I'll come back the same way I left. I would go through the plantation. I would go through the, through the cotton fields. I would go. I, now, I can kind of skip that part where I almost got drowned. I, what about you, Brother Woodlock? I, I can kind of skip that part. <laughs> Are you with me? So, you know, um, but even if we're going through, let's not make other folk lives miserable. So, he says, God is not like your father, that the truth sets man free to experience the love of his heavenly father. God's word, God's love sets us free to experience the love that God has for us. A man's life, this man's life was out of order. Bill Bright in his book, his little, his little track, the four spiritual laws, Bill Bright draws two circles. And in the first circle, 
All the interest is inside of the circle where the, where the person is. The person has turned these interests upside down. They're just so scattered and out of order. It has to cross, Jesus cross, outside of the circle. It is total chaos around this man. Because Jesus is on the outside of his circle. Then Bill Bright shows the second circle as Jesus on the throne inside of the circle. And there is total organization in the circle. Everything is in order. When Jesus is on the throne in our lives, we're not so quick to blow up. We're not so quick to think people pick it on. When you put Jesus on the throne, he put things in order, even in our bad times. He's able to line things out for us. Amen. And we're just so well laid out. Now, what I, the picture I just painted, Bill Bright paints this picture. The picture I just painted is not one that when you don't have, when you don't have any problems. We still have issues, we still have problems, we still have emergencies. We still have sleepless nights, but the fact of the matter is, when Jesus on the throne, he can line it all out. Mark chapter 4. When you look at Mark chapter 4, Jesus is on the boat. The winds and the waves are scaring the disciples. Jesus stands up and he says, peace be still. He lays it all down. The waves, the wind, obey him. To the point that the disciples ask, what kind of man is this that even nature obeys him? He comes out of Mark chapter 4 into Mark chapter 5. There's a man that got a messed up life running crazy out of his mind in the graveyard. And Jesus shows up in verse number 6 of Mark chapter 5. The Bible says the same man that was breaking chains, breaking shackles. The same man that was living in the graveyard. The same man that no one could walk that way without him threatening him. The same man in Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. When it gets to verse number 6, this same man sees Jesus runs, bow down, and worship him. Whenever Jesus is on the throne, he's able to calm things down. Who has number four? Number four, party number four. If you need to and are willing, pause now and ask the Holy Spirit to bring you into a wholehearted love relationship with God. Spend time in prayer expressing your love to God. In the space below, list ways God has expressed his love for you over the years. Thank him again for each one. Thank you. So what we want to do this exercise, you can do it at home, but be thinking about the fact that we need God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus because God wants this wholehearted love relationship with us. It says, spend time in prayer expressing your love to God. In other words, expressing your love to God to God. Expressing your love for God to God. Expressing your love with God to God. Talk to God about you and Him. Talk to God about you and Him. I like asking my, my family and friends and all of them questions. So I, uh, I call my brother and he, I say, hey man, what you doing? He said, man, I'm down on my knees. I said, you're talking to God? He said, no, I did that this morning. <laughs> That's kind of the way we talk, right? <laughs> said, I said, you down there talking to God? He said, no, I did that this morning. I said, well, what did you talk to him about? He said, I talked to him about me. That was so powerful of a moment for me. When we are on our knees in our private settings, Sometimes we need to talk to God about us. That's right. I need to talk to God about me. Mm -hmm. Now, my brother may not ever hear this, but I really appreciate the fact that he gave me a powerful spiritual moment. Because mm -hmm. he told me, 
He was talking to God about him. And I replied, that was a great conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> we ought to talk to God about ourselves. Many times we talk to God about what we want, what we need, but we ought to talk to God about ourselves. Who has the next one? Talk to God about me. Who are you talking to God about? About me. If I tried to summarize the entire Old Testament, it would be expressed in this verse. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. Throughout the Old Testament, God expressed his love for people. The essence of the New Testament is the same. Quoting from Deuteronomy, Jesus said, The greatest commandment in the law is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Mark 12, 30. Everything in your Christian life, everything about knowing him and experiencing him, everything about knowing his will depends on the quality of your love relationship with God. If that is not settled, nothing in your life will be right. Thank you. We're going to end that this one, so let's spend time talking about it. Settle in your heart right now. Settle with yourself right now. Settle in your very own being right now. The love relationship that you have with God, get it right today. Philip Bailey used to sing a song, Tomorrow. It's a Christian song, so y'all know that one. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. I pledge my life to God tomorrow. Then he comes back and he says, what about today? Pledge your life, give your life to God today. For to, tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow. Many times we do our activities based on tomorrow. Many times we project doing things based on tomorrow. Many times we commit to God tomorrow, but tomorrow is not promised. Philip Bailey says, do it today. We got to settle in our mind. Settle in our minds tonight. Tomorrow is not promised. Settle in our mind today that as God loves us, we're going to love him with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our might. We're going to love the Lord our God. This love relationship that we got with God is not a one-sided relationship. It's not made to be one-sided. But this love relationship we have with God is made to be one toward him and one toward us. One-on-one -on -one with God. Isn't that amazing? We have the ability to be one-on-one -on -one with God. That's why when we pray, Lord, bless this church. That's why our slogan is, we are uniting the church. We are not just uniting uh, the New Beginning Church. We are uniting God's church. We are uniting it through love. Jesus said that they will know that you are my disciples by your love for each other. See, you can't fake love. You can't act like you love. You can't talk about love and not really love. You can't Keep a mask on and really love somebody. I'm so glad that I'm pastoring a church that is a loving church. That is a hospitable church. That love people. And not just their people. I'm so glad that I have Christians around me that act like Christians. And we show love toward each other. Why you say that? Because there are some churches that don't express love. I'm glad that we express love. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that God commended, he demonstrated, he showed his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. God demonstrated his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died, gave his life. God gave his very best, his son, and his son gave his life. And the reason why we are Christians, the reason why we exist to glorify God is because God gave his life. He gave Jesus and Jesus gave his life. And the Holy Spirit walks with us and tells us we are his own. You don't have to get another line to receive the Holy Spirit. He came in when Jesus came in. He is there. And he's there for now. The door of the church is open. Amen. There may be somebody here tonight that do not know Jesus. Who have not received him as their personal savior. This is your moment to get things right with God. You must believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, Jesus died for you and for me. We didn't deserve it, but God saw fit to give his precious son over 2,000 years ago, God saw fit. And it's not because he, we were so good that he saved us. It's not because, like the songwriter says, it's not because he thought enough of us to save us. It was because we were right. We were on our way to hell. That God gave his precious son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, and we were not even worthy. If you've never received Jesus, this is your moment to get to know him. If you would just bow your head with me and tell God that you believe the story, that Jesus died for your sins. That you believe that Jesus was buried in a barbed tomb. That you believe that Jesus rose early that third day morning. And you believe that just confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart this story, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, you will be saved. Will you bow your head with me, your heads with me right now? Repeat this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, believing in the story that you are now born again and that you're on your way to heaven. And we will rejoice to Jesus on the other side. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Please come and visit with us. We're at 4251 Shuramai Road. 4251 Shuramai Road. Shuramai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas. 77048. That's Shuramai Road, 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. It is often time. It's time to give to the Lord through sacrificial gifts, through tithes and offering. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving to, by way of Zell, to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zero account. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. 
Missouri City, Texas, 77459, P.O. Box 503. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We thank you for joining us here on Wednesday night. Please do so at 715 every Wednesday night. Join us also at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and also join us for 1030 service every Sunday morning. Thank you again for, for being a part. This coming Sunday, we have Family and Friends Day. Please invite all your families, all your friends to pack the house. We're looking forward to a great time. Pastor Earl Reed of uh, Mississippi, of the Mississippi Delta will be with us. He'll be preaching. You don't want to go to heaven before you hear a great Mississippi preacher, uh, Pastor Earl Reed. Amen. Also, we're having a my, my, my mental state matters, my mental health matters uh, symposium. That is October the 19th. We're inviting everybody to come out. That is my mental state matter. We're going to talk about trauma. We're going to talk about mental state. We're going to talk about health. And we're going to talk about how you get out of generational curses. Please come by and be a part. That's uh, Saturday, October the 19th. Please be here at 9 a.m. for registration. We're going to need people here at the New Beginning Church to, to participate as well as to make ready for our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us stand to be dismissed. We are praying for Brother Euro Miles and his family. We're praying for Brother Euro Miles and his family. And we're looking forward to going to Shreveport, Mississippi. Please call me. If, oh, man. Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport, Louisiana. Street, Shreveport, Louisiana this Saturday. Please call me if you want to go. Uh, we want to go and support our brother, Brother Euro Miles and his family. Amen. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and loving us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We honor you, Father God. We bless your name. We thank you for who you are and for what you do. God, we thank you, Lord, for loving us and pursuing us and blessing our lives. Bless us in our going, Father God, that we will show love to other people. Bless us in our going, Father God, that other people will see Jesus Christ in us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us sing together. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, thank you. God bless you and keep you. It's our prayer.